ಏನು ಶಾಬ ಶಿಲೆ <laughs> How many of you God has touched you in a powerful way? Hayat ke ngat ngo dago ne to ti ya ban ya khan sa ya le. He's encountered you. Amen. Hayat ke tene to ik khan ne. Come on, how many of you this is your first night at the conference this week? Din ya mama patha ma u zong la de tu ban ya shi le la thang ji ba o. God bless you. Hayat ke ji ba ba se. God bless you. Will we pray God just gives you the double double tonight. Hayat ke din ya ma te at ta de ba lo lo me. You're not missing out on anything. Bigger than need him mama can say I got you the dinya mama then can say mama. God is going to pour out over top of every one of you. Did you tell Jesus that I for my prayer that you to go over to the mama. Those that have been here the whole week. The below machine they do it. And those that are here for the first night. Dinya mama but mama who don't let it do it all on for my don't let mama get it. Come on. Amen. 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 Well, it's good to be with you again tonight. I've so enjoyed being with you. As always. <laughs> Jeremy and I just love being with you guys. You're some of our favorite favorite people in the world. <laughs> so thank you for having us once again. We'll be back. Amen. <laughs> Jesus, what is it? I want to go to Ezekiel 44 tonight. And I want to share with you a prophetic word that the Lord has been stirring in me the last few weeks, the last month really. But there's, there's moments in time when God hides prophetic words even, even prophetic messages he'll highlight them in specific places more than others for a specific purpose and Though I've shared this just once before. Diago de mama pioquema. In San Diego. Tema yenta jeno nga San Diego myoma. A couple of weeks ago. Lungere apa anengega. As the Lord was giving me signs about Ezekiel 44. Pia kinga chama go yese jela lese le ne pata bi saka pyo le. He began to do it to me again this week. Di apa male pia ga di chang go wen nga bo yan twa saka pyo la le. On the very day that I arrived. Chama din go yao yao chin ne ma be. I looked at the clock multiple times when it read 44 even in the leaders meeting on the first day while i was standing on the stage i looked and it was Uh, it was i think 144 see god is doing something about the 44 and you'll see then do it like there's significance to the 44 even as it's 2020 this year the 2020 come on it's the 40 Or it's the two and the two, which is the four. Come on, there's something about the double-double. There's something about the 44 that, that God is doing in this season. And I'm telling you, It's it's for specific places. It's for a generation. 
But like I said, there's specific times and places where God will highlight prophetic messages even more than other places. As I mentioned, I, I spoke in San Diego about the 44. But other than that, you're the first place this year. Hallelujah. And that's because this week, as I mentioned, I've been seeing the 44s. The last few days, since arriving here, every day, I've been seeing the 44s. Even today, even when I arrive, tonight at 11.44 God's doing something about the 44s. So I want you to look at Ezekiel 44 tonight. And Ezekiel 44 verse 4 this is the season that you're coming into friends. Ezekiel 44 4 says this. Then he brought me by way of the north gate to the front of the house, and I looked. And behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. And I fell on my face. The glory of the Lord came in such a thick way, in such a heavy manifest way, in the house of the Lord, where Ezekiel was encountering God, the glory of the Lord came in so strong that he literally fell on his face because of the density, the thickness of the glory. And I believe that in this season, God is going to thicken his glory over you, over you as a company of believers, over this movement, that the glory of the Lord is going to come thicker than you've ever Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That there's going to be times when people step foot in this church or people step foot in your presence. Oh, where the glory is going to so overwhelm them. They may, like Ezekiel, fall on their face. Or they just may be so overcome by the glory. By the manifest presence. That they can't help but be saved. They can't help but say God is in this place. They can't help but say there must be a God. Because of the tangible realm of the glory of God. God wants to saturate you. There's going to be another measure of the tangible glory of God. Ezekiel 44.4 that's going to come in in this season. Now, hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
the glory brings forth the prophetic. The glory brings forth the discerning of spirits. The glory brings forth the gifts of the spirit. It brings forth the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. And in the presence of the glory, there's a greater requirement, a higher level of holiness, of purity that's released and that's required. Now you got to understand by holiness I don't mean legalism because legalism is attributed to the religious spirit. Legalism is don't do this, don't do that it's what the Pharisees did in the New Testament which Jesus continually rebuked they were all about the rituals the washing of the hands the keeping of the Sabbath now these things are good if it's under relationship but the Pharisees had no relationship they only had a set of rules Jesus was all about relationship that, hallelujah that's why even on the Sabbath many times Jesus would heal the sick he even, he even cast out demons on the Sabbath and the Pharisees would watch oh and they would criticize oh they would hate Oh, because Jesus was not following their set of rules. See, that's legalism. That's legalism. God's not about legalism. The whole purpose of the law was to to create a standard that the people of God would flourish. The whole purpose of the law being created was to create a set of boundaries so that within those boundaries the people of God would be whole in body, soul, and spirit. That's the reason why the law was even created. But the Pharisees took it to an extent where it wasn't to benefit themselves. It wasn't to create relationship with God. It was just so they could put a little notch on on their belts. Oh, if they felt like they were doing the law, they would put a little star on their banner thinking they met all the requirements when they were missing the whole purpose. It was all about relationship. But you see, holiness, righteousness, not legalism, holiness and righteousness 
are about being in right standing with God. It's about having restored relationship with God. With Abba. Abba Apane. Through Jesus Christ. Yeshu Who sanctifies us. By his blood. He redeems us. And through the power of the Holy Spirit. We are given grace to be consecrated. To be renewed day by day. This, this is what it looks like to walk in holiness and righteousness. So to stand in another measure of glory. There's another measure of righteousness required. Not legalism, but purity of heart. Right standing with God. That comes through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So I want you to see in Ezekiel 44. Again, he brought me by the way of the north gates. To the front of the house and I looked. And behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. And I fell on my face. A sign of the measure of holiness that was in that place. Because of the glory. See, what is falling on our face? Is coming into the holy presence of God. Because when the glory comes, the holiness of God comes. And in the holiness of God, His love manifests. His compassion manifests. His justice manifests. And so, moving forward in Ezekiel 44, I'm not going to read the whole chapter, but I'm going to give you a couple of verses and the gist of what's going on in Ezekiel 44. So the Spirit of the Lord is showing Ezekiel the house of the Lord. And God, God begins to speak to him about the priests that had been serving in the house of God. But he begins to speak to Ezekiel in verse 9 through verse 14. I'm not going to read it all. But you can mark it in your in your Bibles, in your notes. And just pay attention. In those verses, it talks about the priests that were in the house of God. But along with the Israelites, these priests rebelled before the Lord. They went astray from me, it says. In verse 10, it says, the Levites who went far from me, when Israel went astray, who went astray from me after their idols, they'll bear the punishment for their iniquity. See, they were to be ministers in the house of God. Even still, in verse 11, you shall be minister, they shall still be ministers in my sanctuary. But it says they will not, verse 13, they shall not come near to me to serve as a priest to me. See, because these particular Levites 
They had come into the idolatry that the, the children of Israel were walking in. They neglected intimacy to God. And walked in rebellion. They didn't put standards of righteousness in the house of God. So, so because of that, they still, God still gave them their place in their calling to minister in the sanctuary. But listen to this. They lost their privilege to come near to the heart of God. They lost their privilege to minister to the Lord himself. They lost their privilege to come into the Holy of Holies. Because they neglected to honor the glory. But moving forward, in verse 15, but the Levitical priests, another group, the sons of Zadok, they kept charge of my sanctuary when the sons of Israel went astray from me, it says. When everyone else was in rebellion, and neglected intimacy to the Father. The Zadok priesthood, they kept charge of my sanctuary. They didn't go astray. They shall stand before me to offer me the fat and the blood. They shall enter my sanctuary. They shall come near to my table to minister to me and keep my charge. And then it goes on to, to God's describing how those should dress in white linen. Clean and pure. Mm. They had a privilege that the rest of the Levites had lost. They were to be set apart in white linen. In clean turbans. They were to come before the Lord to serve Him. To offer the sacrifices to God. The other Levites lost that privilege. But the Zadoks, they didn't. They didn't neglect intimacy with God. They honored the glory. Now I want you to see a privilege that the Zadok priesthood received. Obviously the ultimate privilege was they got to come near to the heart of God. And in the very presence of God, do you realize that in the tabernacle, in the, the Old Covenant, in the Holy of Holies, the inner, inner, inner sanctuary that could only really be entered once a year. The glory of God will come so strong that the priest would actually go in beyond the veil with bells attached to his feet. Because there was such a high level of glory that 
that if the priest would go in and not be pure or the priest would offer sacrifice that was not pleasing to God that priest might be wiped out but to the one that remained pure in heart again not legalistic but pure clean before the presence of God like these ones the Zadok priesthood who didn't, uh, didn't go astray when everyone else did there was a blessing that remained for them and they would encounter the glory that's the ultimate blessing but in that as well there's a prophetic anointing that's unlocked in the midst of the glory hallelujah there's a prophetic anointing that releases discernment in Ezekiel 44 verse 23 about the Zadok priesthood it says moreover they shall teach my people the difference between, between the holy and the profane and cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. There's a gift of discernment that's released. And of wisdom that's unlocked. Upon the priests that don't go far from God. Who honor his presence. Who are clothed in white robes. Who wear a clean turban on their heads. Who walk in purity before the Lord. Ultimately, who walk in obedience and intimacy to the Lord. The blessing of glory and an additional blessing of the discerning of spirits along with the wisdom of God which come under that prophetic anointing because the discerning of spirits couples with or falls under that prophetic anointing. This is a blessing for those that walk closely to God. In fact, those get to teach the others about discerning between the clean and the unclean. In other words, there's a grace on those that walk close to God to reveal to both the church and the lost the message and the mandate, the conviction, the spirit, the conviction of the Holy Spirit. The message of holiness. Not like the Pharisees taught. Not legalism. But the Holy Spirit who brings conviction of heart. When you live under the anointing of the glory of God, you carry that, that realm of discernment that follows you. That when you come around someone that's walking 
and you know not right with God. All of a sudden they discover there's huh, there's a conviction that comes forth. Or the Holy Spirit just begins to brood in their heart. Begins to awaken them. And you begin to discern. You begin to discern even the issues of their heart. See, the, uh, in Hebrews 4.12, it says, for the word of God is living and active and sharper than a double-edged sword. Sorry, Hebrews 4.12. And it pierces as far as the division of soul and spirit. Of both joints and marrow. And it's able to judge the hearts and the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight. But all things are open and laid bare to the eyes of him with whom we have to do. The word of God is sharper than a double-edged sword. It's a discerner of the hearts, the thoughts and intents of the heart. And when you move by the Spirit of the Lord, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, you begin to see and perceive. You begin to discern through the eyes of the Spirit what only God can see. You begin to discern and perceive the, the thoughts and intents of people's hearts. You begin to discern even what God is beginning to do in their hearts. So as we usher in the glory, as the, glo as the glory comes in increasing measures in this season, there's a higher level, a higher standard required of us. But there's also a greater measure of discernment. Of intimacy, of the manifest presence of God, and of the prophetic realm, the wisdom of God, the, dis the discernment of God that would rest upon you, that would rest upon us to minister holiness to the people all around. See, when the glory of God comes, the holiness of God comes. Again, not legalism, but the true reality of who God is, the true nature of God. Amen. Because Amen. if you look at Exodus, Exodus 34, or even Exodus 33, when Moses cries out to to see the glory of God. In Exodus 33, God begins to describe what he's going to pass by Moses. All of God's goodness. And in Exodus 34, verse 5, the Lord descended in the cloud and stood there with him. 
As he calls upon the name of the Lord. And as God passed Moses by, hiding Moses in the cleft of the rock, God began to proclaim his name compassionate and gracious slow to anger abounding in loving kindness and truth who keeps loving kindness for thousands who forgives iniquity he forgives iniquity, transgression, and sin. Yet will by no means leave the guilty unpunished. Visiting the iniquity of fathers on the children. And on the grandchildren to the third and fourth generations. In other words, God is a merciful and just God. Slow to anger. Abounding in love. And when we come into the glory realm, as the glory increases over us, Ezekiel 44:4 in this season. God's holiness is that which we just read in Exodus 34. See, his holiness is the complete nature and character of God. It's his completion, his complete nature. When the glory comes, God's very nature comes. And when we come under the nature of God, and we step into that realm, and we invite that realm, and we embrace that realm, we don't need to be afraid. Rather, we get transformed. Because God Because we become transformed into his likeness. Even as we were originally made in his image. In the glory realm, we begin to be transformed. Even more so into the nature, into the character of God. He begins to remove Remove wickedness. As we submit, as we come under His holiness. And in that realm, He begins to give us His eyes. Where we begin to see, we begin to encounter. We begin to perceive. We begin to know things we shouldn't know. Because we begin to have the eyes of the Lord. See, God wants to give you his eyes. He wants to give you his discernment. So that just like the Zadok priesthood, 
would teach the people between to discern between the holy and the profane. To discern between righteousness and wickedness. That in a similar way, you as the priesthood of the Lord. Because the Bible calls you kings and priests. A royal priesthood. That in the glory and the presence of God, God gives you eyes to see. Discernment to perceive. That whether you're with other believers or you're amongst the lost, wherever you are, firstly, the glory comes as you honor the presence of God. And as that glory cloud follows you, as that glory cloud covers you, as it creates an atmosphere around you, and it gives you clear perception, clear discernment, the people that you come across begin to get touched by that glory round. Hallelujah. And as they get touched by that glory round, they begin to step into the realm of God's holiness where the Spirit of the Lord begins to stir in their hearts conviction and then God giving you eyes to see and discernment to perceive you begin to understand where they are at heart like Hebrews 4.12 speaks of where you begin to discern what God's doing in their heart where you begin to discern how God is moving and convicting so then you can come with the word of the Lord to speak truth, life, and love into their hearts that would then usher them into the kingdom straight from the realm of God's glory. See, this is what God wants to do in your life to bring forth another measure of glory that we would see and taste and experience his glory simply because God is so good. And as we draw near to him, he draws near to us. But secondly, that those that we encounter, those that we meet, will come under that glory cloud and they will begin to taste and see who God really is. They would experience his holiness and they would taste and see that God is good. That they would come into a revelation that would bring forth salvation. Ultimately, this is what God's longing for. But see, there's another measure. Ezekiel 44.4 of the glory of God coming in that he would release his clothing of righteousness his cloud of glory that will cause us to see see we're not 
going to go there in detail, but in, in Ezekiel 1, Ezekiel was standing by the river. And as he stood by the river, he began to have visions of God. You can read this in Ezekiel verse uh, chapter 1. By the river Kibar, Ezekiel began to have visions of God. And as he had visions of God, he began to see the throne of God. And as he saw the throne of God, he began to see a brightness of the glory of God. You can read this in Ezekiel chapter 1. But I want you to see something tonight. See that we need to get so close to the throne of God. We need to get immersed in the river of God. Then we will be washed clean. And then we would experience the glory of God. And in the glory of God, we would have visions of God. God wants to release these prophetic eyes. The visions of God. The glory of God. To your life. But we cannot hold back. See, what kept the Levites, not the Zadok priesthood, but what kept the Levites away from God? They went astray when all the children of Israel went astray. They didn't come near to the presence of God. But you see, the Zadok priesthood, even when everyone else was going astray, they kept close to the heart of God. And because of it, they got to experience the glory. And actually, if you move forward in Ezekiel 44, it goes on to say in verse 28, It shall be with regard to an inheritance for them, the Zadok priesthood, that I am their inheritance. God speaking. That I am their possession. How many of you want God to be your inheritance? How many of you want God to be your possession? See, the very heart of God in revealing His glory and His holiness is that we would see Him that we would know him and that we would desire him that we would run even deeper into his presence that we would run deeper into his heart and as we run deeper into his heart we would see and perceive both his heart and that which he would show us about other people. That gift of discernment. The realm of the wisdom of God. Prophetic eyes to see. That we would dive right in to see with clarity like Ezekiel saw with clarity like Ezekiel had visions of God in Ezekiel chapter 1 he had visions of God why? because he was by the river do you know that there's a river that proceeds from the throne of God? 
Mama Mie Yeshia. Revelation 22 speaks of it. There's a river that comes straight from the throne of God. And in the river is the glory. In the river is his glory. In Ezekiel 47, Ezekiel is brought back to the door of the house. And water was flowing from under the threshold. And the water began to rise. First to the ankles. Then to the knees. Then to the, then to the waist. And then up over the head. To the place where it got so deep that you had to swim in it. That he had no control of moving himself in it. He was moved by the river. Because it was over his head. All he could do was swim. Let the river of God, the Holy Spirit, move him. And in that it says that everywhere the river goes, life happens. And there's much life, there's many fish. There's a tree on either side of the river. There's leaves that are for healing. You see, I share this tonight because in order for Ezekiel 44.4 to happen, in order for us to welcome in the glory, that the glory will come in from the north gate, so thick that we would fall on our faces because the tangible manifest presence of God is so strong where the Lord becomes our inheritance in order for this to happen like Ezekiel we need to come to the river we need to stand by the river and then we need to enter the river we need to go in over our heads not just ankle deep not where we have control where we can move as we please where we can resist the current where we can resist the move of God see actually legalism does this Legalism pretty much is this. <laughs> oh, I'll just step my foot in <laughs> to church. But I want to have control. I'm going to do things the way I want to do them. I'm going to live the way I want to live. And I'm going to be good with that in control of my own life in control of how, I, how much God I want that's standing ankle deep only but when we go all the way over our heads we no longer have footing we no longer have control. No, now the Holy Spirit, which is the river of God, proceeding from the throne of grace, begins to move us, begins to lead us, begins to reveal to us things that only God can show us. When we're in over our heads, no more human control, only the control of the Holy Spirit. 
I want to be controlled by the Spirit of God. I want to be moved by the Spirit of God. See, when this is our heart, when this is how we live, that we jump deep into the river, then the glory can begin to come. Greater and greater and greater greater still and when the when the glory comes like the cloud the people begin to see it do you remember in in second chronicles in second chronicles chapter five Solomon, Solomon ushers in the presence of God. Now, I don't have time to go. This is a whole message in itself. I don't have time. I thought I was going to. But to go through the phases of Solomon's intimacy. The phases of the glory. Because originally, in 2 Chronicles chapter 1, he gives a sacrifice. He goes, he goes out of the city. And he goes to present an offering to the Lord. And when he goes to present an offering, a great offering, a thousands, it so pleased the heart of God that God opened his eyes to see. In 2 Chronicles 1 verse 7, it says in the night God appeared to Solomon and said, ask what I'll give you, what you would like. And he asks for wisdom. Actually, he asks for discernment. How to lead the people. That was a wise answer from Solomon. But his heart to come before God manifested visions from God. It not only manifested visions from God, but it manifested, it brought forth a blessing from God. Solomon could have asked for anything. But he asked for discernment. He asked for wisdom. It's important to ask for these things from God when he gives you invitation. Because God will give you eyes to see. Hearts to perceive. And because Solomon's answer was was so pleasing to the heart of God. God not only gave him wisdom and discernment, he gave him riches and wealth and fame. Greatness in a kingdom greater than any king before or after. Now fast forwarding, to 2 Chronicles 5, Solomon's heart was so to build a house for the Lord. To host the presence of God. This should be our desire. Not that we have to build a natural place. But you see, 1 Corinthians 3.16 1 Corinthians 3.16 it says in Corinthians it says that you're a house of God you're a temple of God see it's, it should be our desire to host the presence of God 
which is that realm of glory. So Solomon builds God a house. And once again, he gives a radical, radical, generous offering to God. Demonstrating his commitment and his love for God. And further on in 2 Chronicles 5, the priests begin to lead them in worship. And as they begin to worship, as they begin to declare he indeed is good, his loving kindness is everlasting. What were they declaring? The very thing that God spoke to Moses that is God's glory. So they were declaring he indeed is good and his loving kindness is everlasting. They were declaring his glory. And it says, then the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud. So the priest could not even stand to minister. Because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. That realm we read about in Ezekiel 44, Solomon experienced in 2 Chronicles 5. Why? Because he valued the presence of God. He didn't even care what anybody else thought. He went out of his way to honor the presence of God. To exalt the name of the Lord. To welcome in the glory. And the glory came. And it goes on, you can read chapter 7. The glory comes again. And God appears in verse 12 again to Solomon. Again he appears to Solomon. The prophetic anointing that unlocks visions to see and the voice of God to hear. It manifests again to Solomon. And then in chapter 9, we see the fruit of this glory that is manifest in their king, in his kingdom. This is what God wants to release to you. Amen. In chapter 9, you see the fruit of the glory of Solomon's kingdom. Kings and queens came from afar to see the glory that they heard about. To see the glory they heard that Solomon had. To see the wisdom that they heard that Solomon walked in. The queen of Sheba comes from afar. She heard about the glory. She heard about the wisdom. But she was a little bit skeptical. She came out of curiosity. And when she came, she tested Solomon with difficult questions. Every question, Solomon spoke wisdom. Why? 
Palole. Because just like in Ezekiel 44, the glory of God releases the discernment. Remember the Zeta priesthood were given the privilege to teach the children of Israel to discern between the holy and the profane. In other words, they were given the privilege to walk in great wisdom to not only carry discernment but to teach and impart discernment to others. So in Solomon's day the queen of Sheba tests Solomon and Solomon goes over and beyond the queen's expectations and it says in verse 4 that she was breathless she was in so much awe of the glory and the wisdom of God on Solomon that she became breathless. Verse, end of verse 6 says, you, she says, you surpass the report that I heard. And then in verse 8, she says, blessed be the Lord your God who delighted in you. She acknowledged God's favor upon his life. God's glory upon his life. And then in verse 9, she goes on to give him great gifts. Extraordinary gifts. Even spices and gifts that had never been anything like those before. Because she tasted of the glory. See, the outside world will know when you are saturated by the glory realm. When you carry the visions of God, when you carry the wisdom of God, the discernment of God, God wants to unlock this to you. See, this realm of the cloud of glory that comes in, Ezekiel 444, your word for this season increased measures of glory that would cause the world to be stunned and that would cause you to walk in new measures of discernment of prophetic insight this realm will proceed you it'll go before you and it'll follow you. People won't even know what they're, they won't even know what hit them. Just, I'll share a couple of testimonies then we're going to pray. Just a couple of weeks ago, I was, uh, I, I went to this art class in San Diego. San Diego, With a couple of the girls uh, that, that, are part of the uh, fire and glory outpouring. We went to this art class. And the moment we got there, the instructor started to just publicly say, I don't know why. I've had the strangest day. Now, he said, I received some bad news today. 
But despite the bad news, I've had this feeling, this, this extremely good, just incredible feeling in my body. He said, even as I was driving my car, there was this unusual, just, just presence. Essence of goodness. He said I couldn't escape it. He said I don't even know why. This guy's not born again. But he said over and over, I don't know why I've been experiencing this presence today. An extremely good presence. And he said, I even had this recurring dream that I keep thinking about. And I don't know why. And he said, I don't even know why I'm telling you. How many know God has a purpose? God has a purpose. See, the moment that he began to say this, the, the girls that I was with, they looked at me, they said, Miranda, it's because we have the Holy Spirit. They said, not only the Holy Spirit, we have the glory. They said, it's because he didn't even know that God was preparing him. To come under the glory cloud that we carry. See, this man felt electrified in the glory of God. But he just didn't know it. See, just like the Queen of Sheba, she came into the realm of Solomon's glory. And she was struck with awe. She was struck with awe. See, when the glory covers you, when Ezekiel 44 for manifest over you. The glory will precede you. It'll go before you and it'll follow you. So that people won't even know what hit them. See, we knew what the hit that art instructor. God was preparing him for, for an encounter with his presence. I believe there's coming a time many will be saved like, with encounters like these. I was in a place in, in Europe and uh, I, I was actually uh, doing fashion work there. And the glory of God began to overtake me. It began to proceed. It began to saturate the area that I was in. So much that people began to come to me and say, hey, I need a word from, I need you to pray for me. I need a word from God. They, they didn't really understand prophecy. They didn't really understand the realm of glory. But they saw something. You see, just to give you a little bit of background, the few days leading up to the final day that I was there, I was doing my work as, as a model. But backstage, all the crew, the makeup artists, the nutritionists, all of them, the designers, they saw something different in me. 
They began to talk amongst themselves. They told me this later. They began to talk about me behind my back. Saying, what's, what's with that Miranda? She carries a joy we've never seen before. She carries a peace we've never experienced before. What is it about her? There's something she carries that we've never seen. They experience the glory. And on the final day, the, in the morning, I was sitting with a makeup artist. Uh, she was about, she was doing my makeup before a shoot. And this woman began to come under the anointing of the glory. And God began to reveal to me secrets of her heart. Because remember in the glory, the prophetic realm and the discerning of spirits opens up. Much more than just a gift. When you operate under the glory, naturally the discernment and prophetic just flow. You don't even have to try. You don't even have to strive. And so the words of knowledge just began to flow over this woman. And she said, how do you know this about me? I said, God knows you. <laughs> I said, I have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And he's revealing these things about you to me. She said, Jesus is real. Jesus is alive? You can have a relationship with Jesus? She said, now I know why we've been seeing that you're so different. She said, oh, weekend long, we've been talking about you, wondering why this you carry this peace, this joy we've never seen before. Now you're telling me things about me that you couldn't possibly know. And you're telling me it's because of a relationship with Jesus. She said, I need to know this Jesus. She said, I want to have a relationship with Jesus like you have. So right then and I led her in a prayer to receive Jesus in her heart. She was born again. The joy covered her face. She felt so good as the Holy Spirit filled her. And through that day, she was beaming with joy. She was changed. And not only that, one by one, different members of the backstage crew, designers, a dance choreographer, producer of a show, one by one, they began to come to me throughout the day from lunch to dinner. Say, I heard about you. I've seen the difference in you. And I've heard about the things you've told other people about themselves. Can you tell me things about me? They were hungry for truth. They were hungry for an encounter. They were hungry for the, re were hungry for the reality of God. And one by one, as God began to reveal words of knowledge about them, they began to cry under the anointing of the presence of God, saying, how do you know this about me? This is so accurate. There's no way you could know this. No, there's no way I could know this. But God knows this. And one by one, 
God revealed the secrets of their heart and details about their life. And God gave me just like in Ezekiel 44. When the glory comes, He gives you discernment to discern their hearts. Like, like Hebrews 4.12. To discern the thoughts and intents of the heart. And as the Lord gave me discernment to know which ones were ready for salvation, I gave the invitation according to if they were ready. There was a gentleman who was a, a choreographer there. Holy Spirit revealed to me that he was having uh, epileptic seizures, like seizures, uh, uh, and voices speaking to him. Like fits in the mind. Yeah. Sure enough, he he began to he began to be so uh, shocked and yet manifesting fear. Because for the last about six months, he'd been battling this very strong. But God had released the discernment and the word of knowledge in order that he would be set free. And that night he was healed, set free, and he prayed to receive Jesus in his heart. Because God showed me that he was ready to receive Jesus. This is what the glory does. This is the season that we're living in. Where God is releasing in Ezekiel 44.4 glory. That would unlock new measures of intimacy. God as your inheritance. Like God was the inheritance for the Zayoff priesthood. And the discerning of spirits. To discern between righteousness and wickedness. To discern discern the thoughts and intents of the heart and to move out in the wisdom of God and the prophetic realm of God to teach and to speak forth the words from heaven as well as to see visions of God like Ezekiel 1 and to encounter God this is what God wants to do for you in this season. Are you hungry tonight? Are you hungry tonight? Do you receive the word of the Lord tonight? I want, I want those of you. Hold, hold on for one second before you come forward. Hold on for one second before you come forward. Before we do anything, if there's anyone in this place that you've been in one of two places, either you've been like, not the Zadok priesthood, but you've been like the Levites, who have, gone, who have gone far from God in a time when there's worldliness all around in a time when there's disobedience and rebellion all around where the people have strayed far from God that you've maybe been one who has also moved back, stepped back from the presence of God. You've strayed from God. You haven't walked intimately with Him. Maybe you've been backslidden. Maybe you've stepped back into worldly living. God wants to draw you back tonight. Or maybe you've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. God wants to meet with you tonight. He's the way, the truth, and the life. The only way to the Father. The only way to encounter this realm of glory that I've been telling you about. Where just like God said, his glory was his compassion and his goodness and his mercy and his loving kindness. His glory is his justice. 
His holiness is His goodness. The way to experience that and not just experience it from somebody else but to live knowing that measure of glory. To live knowing this God of glory where He longs to reveal His loving kindness to you. If you've never known Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you've never confessed him as your Lord, or you've never received him in your heart, tonight is your night. This is the only way. This is the only way to know this God of glory. The God who's not dead, but the God who's alive who's alive today who speaks today who's not just a, a dead he's not a dead God he's not an idol he's not, he's not a, a dead image he's a living being alive full of love full of justice full of mercy who wants to open your eyes to see who wants to speak to you who wants to have relationship with you if you've never known this God through Jesus Christ who's the only one that reconciles us to God that puts us in a state of righteousness who washes us white as snow if you've never known this God every eye closed you want to know this God tonight I want you to raise your hand tonight if you need to know this God tonight you've never known this God you need to know this God wave your hand in the air like you just don't care wave your hand in the air like you just don't care now those of you waving this is the greatest decision where God is going to meet with you in a way you've never known before in a way that is so beautiful where he's going to fill your heart with joy he's going to fill your life with peace if you just raise your hand if you want to know this God I want to invite you to the altar tonight let those who want to know this God for the first time let those ones come let those ones come we want to pray for you quick don't be shy Jesus confessed you before all men and before God come don't hesitate those of you who raise your hand come come don't hesitate come on come on yes come on Come on, don't hesitate. This is not a matter to be shy about. I know that in this culture, sometimes we battle the shyness. But God's looking for boldness. Because it's our bold statement of faith that puts us in right standing before God. Jesus boldly died on a cross for you. He boldly took the nail to the cross to be pierced through for our transgressions so that he would take all of our sin upon himself so we could be made new. If we can't be bold before God now, how will we be bold before him in the marketplace? In our place of work. In the place where we need to be a bold witness for him. So for one more moment, I'm going to wait. These are bold here. These that are confessing tonight, I need to know this God in a real way. If you need to, keep, if you need to come, Please come, don't hesitate. Please come, don't hesitate. This, is, this isn't for me or for anyone in this
this place. It's for you and God. It's for you and God tonight. And so God would wipe your slate clean and make you a clean new creation in right standing with God that you would know him because he knows you. Is there anybody else? Anybody else that needs to be Anybody else that needs to come? Don't hesitate. This is the greatest miracle of all. Greater than any physical healing. We celebrate the physical healings. We've been seeing them all week long. There will be more tonight. But the greatest miracle of all is the, one, is the one that puts us in right standing for eternity. That makes us right with God for eternity. Is there anyone else? Just wave if you're still need to come. If you still need to come. If, if you need a friend to come down with you, that's okay. If you need a friend, to come with you because you want to come but something's holding you back. Just, just whisper to your neighbor, will you come with me? Will you come and receive Jesus with me? For just a moment longer, is there anybody else? We don't want this moment to pass anybody by because this is the greatest miracle of all. This is the greatest miracle of all. Keep coming if you need to come. Lava, lava, lava. And if you've been backslidden, if you've been one of those Levites that strayed far from God, and you need to come back to God tonight, just come tonight. Come tonight. Come tonight. Come tonight. Don't hesitate. Come, if you need to get right with God tonight. If you need to get right with God tonight. If you need to come back into his presence. Because he's calling you. He's welcoming you. Maybe we went far from him. But he's waiting with his arms wide open. Ready for you to come. Ready for you to come. Ready for you to draw near. to know his glory to experience him yet again anyone else don't wait any longer because we want to pray we want to pray if you need to come quickly 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 don't hesitate quickly 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 anybody else just wave if you still need to come because I want to pray but I want to wait for you come 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 Come. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Anybody else? Anybody else? This is not for me. It's not for Pastor Sarah. It's not for anybody in this place. Except for you and God. For you and God. The only reason why we have you come to the front is because you're making a declaration. You're making a bold statement of faith that I'm coming out from the place that I was in and I'm stepping into a new place. I'm stepping into a place of intimacy with God, of relationship with God. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, the name so we're going to pray. And if there's anyone that still needs to come, you can come. Or you can pray from your seat if you're still in your seat. But those of you right here, I want you to put your hand on your heart tonight. And we can all do this in this place. We, 
we can pray again invite Jesus in so those of you that are responding tonight and for all the rest of us let's pray this simple prayer to invite Jesus in to wash us so repeat after us Lord Jesus tonight I come to you and I confess that I've sinned against you that I haven't lived for you that I haven't been walking with you that I've been far from you but Jesus I know that your arms are open wide I believe that you died on the cross for me. Your arms open wide. Stretched across a cross. To take my sin upon yourself. Your arms open wide because of love. And tonight, Lord Jesus, I believe in the cross. I believe that you did it for me. God, I know what to know, Yong Jie. And I ask you to forgive me of my sin. I ask you to wash me clean. I ask you to come into my heart to purify me to make me a new creation. And I invite you, Holy Spirit, to fill me to fill me with the presence of God to walk with me to talk to me and to lead me all the days of my life. Tonight, Lord Jesus, I choose you because you first chose me. And I give my life to you, Jesus. From this day forward, professing that I'm a child of God. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Yes, give the Lord praise. I want to pray. For everyone in this place, specifically for those that just responded, that God would mark you with his Holy Spirit. He would mark you with his glory. You would feel him. You'd feel his presence. You'd hear his voice. Some of you, you've had visions. But you haven't necessarily understood them. God's going to give you more visions. And some of the visions you've had, he's going to revisit. But he's going to give you understanding. He's going to give you clarity. So, Father, I pray right now. God, for my brothers and sisters here, standing at the altar, and Lord, those all over this place, and those watching by live stream, who also responded tonight. God, fill these with your heart. Holy Spirit. Fill them with your Holy Spirit. Mark them with your Holy Spirit. Seal them with your Holy Spirit. God, speak to them as only you can speak to them. Release visions and dreams. God, release your love. Release your 
baptism of the love of the Father. A baptism of the love of the Father. Sealed with the Holy Spirit. Oh, marked by your goodness. Fill them full and overflowing. God, that they would see. Eyes that see. Ears that hear. A heart that feels. Your tangible love that knows your voice, that hears your voice, that sees you. Mark them, God. Give them eyes to see. Mark them, God. Fill them, God. Eyes to see, Holy Spirit. Everyone here, God. Fill them, Lord. Fill them, God. Just put your hands out before the Lord. Some of you are going to begin to feel like an electricity come upon you. Like an electricity across your hands. As the Holy Spirit's marking you. Some of you are going to feel like a wind come across your face. As the Holy Spirit breathes upon you. Some of you are going to begin to feel a warm flow through your body. As He fills you. Some of you all across this place are going to begin to feel a warmth come through your body as he heals you. There's a healing and anointing present right now. You can receive a miracle right now. There's a healing anointing present right now. Holy Spirit, we welcome you to move in power. Your tangible presence of God. Your electricity, God. The warmth of your touch. The wind of your spirit. Your healing anointing. All across this place. All across this place, Lord, release your healing anointing. Your healing warmth. Your healing oil. We invite with healing oil in Jesus' mighty name every trace of sickness and disease moves right now in Jesus' mighty name Holy Spirit come fill, fill, fill in Jesus' name come on, I want you to check your bodies I want you to check your bodies see if the pain's gone See if you feel stronger. See if the pain's gone. See if there's healing that's come. Feel if you can feel the electricity, the power of God in you. Just let him touch you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now check your bodies. Who just feels a release? Who felt a release? Wave if you just felt the healing oil. Wave if you just felt. Wave really high. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Wave really high. Thank you, Lord. Wave really high. Wave really high. Come on, there's a healing presence in this place. Wave really high. Come on, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus Thank you, Lord. Jesus in Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, if you received a healing, I want to invite you really quickly. Please don't hesitate. Really quickly come forward. We want to hear what God did. And while they're coming forward, please don't take long. Just come quick. We just want really quick testimonies of what God did to give glory to God. And as they're coming, as they're coming, those of you up here, those of you here, how many of you feel the presence of God? How many of you, how many of you feel the presence of God? How many of you feel the presence of God? 
Do you feel the presence of God tonight? Do you feel the presence of God? Friends, friends, look wow. at me for a second. Do you feel the presence of God? You feel the electricity in your hands? You feel that electricity? Thank you, Holy Jesus Spirit. Jesus, Many of these are envisions right now. They're encounters right now. God, release them more. How are you feeling? How are you feeling? He feels that something is big, something big is floating inside. Wow. Where it's gone out. Wow. Uh. God just healed you on the inside. He set you free. He set you free. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. There's freedom. You're going to see everything in a new way. You're going to see people in a new way. You're going to see life in a new way. He loves you so much. God is so good. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Now, really quickly, let's get a couple of the healing testimonies. What happened? Yeah, you can come up here. Come up here. Shama dia ni lega tua tapa ma na ceng tong ceng wono di pai ceng ma jen ah 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 cawi he has a pain in the stomach three and four times a week for a long time. And when he when you pray for him, he feels the electricity in his hand and then the the pain has just gone. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Who else? Who else received a like healing? Yeah, come. Thank you, Lord. Hello, Jabile. He has a pain in his knee for a long time. Yeah, and in none, it is totally Amen. Healed. How come Amen. you had the pain? Do we know why he had the pain? For three years. For three years? So many years, you know? Hello, Javi. Three years. Yeah. Wow. Could you do this before? Are you know what? Below now, now, low Jiva, below now, they like. Are you know what? I'm not low in now, eh? Hala. Are you know what? I'm not low in now, lah. Last time he could, when he do that, he's in so much pain, but wow. now he's totally here. Amen. 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 Jesus. Amen. Wow. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, Thank you, Lord. Jesus, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What else? I think. What else? Yeah. Who else got healed? I saw a bunch of hands. Who else was healed? Who else received a healing touch? Tonight? Who else? Just give me a wave. We give glory to God. When we when we give testimony. When we say God healed me, it seals the miracle and it gives glory to God. Anybody else? You felt the healing oil come through you. You felt a healing touch. Come on, check your bodies one more time. Check your bodies one more time. Someone's left ankle is being healed right now. Someone's left ankle. 
Who had the issue with the left ankle? Who had the, the issue with the left? Move it. Begin to move it. Begin to move it. Begin to move it. Begin to move it. Whoa. Begin to move it. How's Balone. that feeling? Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank
And he's going to use you to bring forth peace and light and hope. And even the nightmares that, that you've had and that people in your family have had God's going to stop the nightmares. And he's going to release the peace of God. And the dreams from Jesus. Where the torment that came in the night. We rebuke it in Jesus' name. And God's going to replace it with peace. In Jesus' name. In Je- he loves you so much. He loves you so much. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, God is good tonight. How many of you received a touch from Jesus tonight? How many of you received a touch from the Lord tonight? Come on, how many of you felt the electricity or the, the heat of the Holy Ghost tonight? Amen? Amen. How many, how many of you feel the presence of God? Amen. Another measure of the glory of God. So day after day, I encourage you, invite him. Step into his presence with worship and praise and invite the glory. Invite the glory to change you. Invite God to speak to you. And you'll see he's going to sharpen your discernment. He's going to sharpen your eyesight and your ears to see and to hear by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. God bless you. I love you. Thank you for having us. And I can't wait to come back. God bless you. မိစ်ဝေးကူကြီးရှုနေတာဒီယူအမ်စီအသင်းတော်ရဲ့တရားခေါ်ချက်များပဲဖြစ်ပါတယ်မိစ်ဝေးအာမလေးရှားနိုင